Welcome to Recipe Wars. My name is Lalita Lopantry, and today we are battling out tacos. That's right. My name is Judith Jones, and today I'll be doing Emeril Lagasse's version of his funky chorizo tacos, as he likes to call it. And I'll be doing Rick Bayless's recipe, and he's doing the recipe with Martha Stewart. And let's check out the video. Let's. Okay. Then I got a little steamer set up here. What I'm steaming, see this steamer set up here? Because that's where I want to steam our flour tortillas for our taco. All right, I'm going to stop pureeing this. Come back, I'll show you how the whole thing fits together. Stick around, it's Funky Tacos. Well, um, I'm anxious to see how Rick Bayless's tacos stack up to those <laughs> tacos. But this is a more unusual combination, actually. You're using the Mexican chorizo, chorizo sausage. You know, it's made like a breakfast sausage. It's not cooked, it's not cured like a uh -huh. salami style Spanish right. chorizo is. But oh, of good. course, the, a perfect taco always starts with a perfect tortilla. My recipe is by Rick Bayless, who is the a godfather of Mexican cuisine. Um, my recipe, he kind of sticks to a little bit more what he mentions is traditional street food tacos using Mexican chorizo, onions, and a fresh tomatillo salsa. And I'm also going to be using uh, Mexican chorizo. Now, in the video, they have the chorizo encased, um, but we are using, both of us, um, bulk chorizo because sometimes it's kind of hard to find Mexican chorizo that, that's encased. Um, so, do what you can, do what you can find, we're going to use it in bulk and we're just going to cook it um, instead of slicing it and grilling it. So I'm going to start by sauteing my chorizo and I don't use any oil because chorizo itself is already really fatty and in the video he mentions that he makes his own chorizo which is a little bit complex which is just made from ground pork, a bunch of spices, a lot of paprika but um, if you can make it go right ahead. So I'm just going to start by sauteing my onions first. And I am going to go ahead and saute my chorizo. And as uh, Lolita said, we're not going to add any grease or oil in there because the chorizo is made up of pork fat and pork and those lovely chilies and spices, paprika and all of that. So we're just going to let that cook there. So our chorizo is just about done. It's usually kind of hard to tell when it's done because it looks all the same color. It's just that red color and you can't quite tell um, if it's done like you would with the normal ground beef. Uh, but you have to tell on the consistency and when it starts getting less mushy and breaks up a little bit more, that's when you know it's done. And for me, my chorizo has been rendering out a little bit and I'm gonna add my half-boiled potatoes. And you can't actually use Spanish chorizo if you want. It's been smoked and dried, so it is harder. Um, but you can use that and you don't have to cook that. You can just slice it on an angle and use that instead if you like. So while my potatoes and chorizo are cooking, Rick Bayless gives a great tip on how you can get those corn tortillas to taste like they do from Mexico from the streets. So he takes a damp towel and puts a little bit of water on there and then he covers it on the bottom and the top, so a little blanket around the corn tortillas and puts it in the microwave for about a few minutes. So when you do put it in the microwave, you want to make sure that your microwave is on 50% because if, if you do put it on too high, it steams way too much and your tortillas are just going to break. So you want to kind of let it slowly steam so they become nice and soft and pliable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And Emerald's way of getting his tortillas soft and pliable is by using a steamer. So he does the same thing. He puts his corn tortillas and wraps them in a damp paper towel. So Lolita is going to make her salsa, but I have already made mine in the food press processor. And let me tell you how I did it. So this is a roasted tomato salsa. So what we did is we lined a baking tray with parchment paper and we put the broiler on at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, on one side of the baking tray, we put our garlic and our onions. And on the other side, we put our jalapeno and about four to six plum tomatoes. So under the broiler they go for about 10 minutes. 
I took them out and then the garlic and the onions are now ready to let cool. And then put them back under the broiler for another 10 minutes until the tomatoes and the jalapeno are charred and soft at just how we want it. And we, we want it kind of charred to get those earthy flavors. So once they have all cooled, we then put them in a food processor. Just like this one. Just like that one. <laughs> we then put them in a food processor with some sherry vinegar, the juice of a lime, and some water and cilantro, and a bit of salt and pepper, of course, to your tasting. And we blitz that up. And we're also putting in there some roasted poblano peppers, which are these. And I'm going to show you how to char these in just a second. So we charred them, um, we deseeded them, took the skin off, I cut them in there. Should look like that and we put them in the food processor with the rest of those ingredients. Blitz it up and it made this beautiful roasted tomato salsa here with our poblano chile. And mine is actually gonna be made with all raw ingredients. I'm gonna be using a tomatillo. And if you don't know what a tomatillo is, it comes from the nightshade family, which is also part of the gooseberry family. And it has this little husk on there and they're a little bit sticky, so how you clean it is just rinse it underwater just to get rid of that stickiness. So I'm just gonna pop my tomatillos into the food processor with a clove of garlic. And in the video, Martha Stewart has this handy dandy garlic peeler tool, but um, not necessary. Just yeah. peel it with your fingers. And I'm gonna put a jalapeno in there, taking out the seeds, because I don't want it to be too spicy. And I'm just gonna blitz that up. So my tomatillos in my food processor have bled out and gotten a little bit slushy, so that's when I'm gonna add my avocado. And that's gonna make it nice and creamy and rich. And I'm just gonna take my spoon and scoop it right out. And to take out the seed, I'm just gonna pack it right down the middle and twist it out, and there you go. And in the video, he doesn't use any lime juice in there, which I thought was a little bit weird because I really like acid in my salsas. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some lime juice in there. You are cheating. <laughs> Yours is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> and just some salt. I'm just gonna blitz that up until it's all nice and incorporated. So while Alita's doing that, I am going to show you how I roasted my poblano peppers. So these are wonderful peppers um, from the area of Puebla in Mexico. And what we want to do is char them um, so it can bring out the texture of the peppers um, and remove that waxiness, that waxy skin it has. So I'm just going to turn up the heat here. And with some tongs, I'm just going to place it on there and we're going to heat it up until it gets nice and charred. So this will make it easier to take the stem out and to de-seed it too. And if you've never had a poblano chili before, it's kind of in the middle range of spicy. Mm -hmm. It's not overly spicy yeah. like a serrano, um, but it's still really sweet and kind of in the middle if you're yeah, a Yeah, it's not too spicy. So our poblano pepper is now nice and charred, or chad, as Emra Legassi likes to say. And what we're going to do is put it into a bowl. And right away, we're going to put this plastic film over it. And as you can see already, it's starting to steam. So we want to create that kind of tent of steam to loosen the outer skin. Um, so this will take probably about three minutes. So we can take that outer skin off, de-seed it, and cut it into slices. So we've let our poblano pepper rest for about three minutes under this plastic film. So let's take it out. Yeah, and that should be kind of hot and soft. And all I'm gonna do is actually wrap it in a paper towel, pull that char off it. And by charring the poblano pepper, it's just gonna give it a really nice earthy taste. Stem off at the end, and we can just cut it down the middle. You can remove all that char if we didn't get it in the paper towel. Okay, so just remove all those seeds from your poblano pepper. And we're just gonna cut them in slices. So I'm gonna go get my tacos or my tortillas from the microwave and you can just see the steam coming out of it. They're nice and pliable and just soft, ready to put that chorizo and salsa in there. So I'm just about ready to try the tacos. Yeah, yeah. I'm nearly there, nearly there. <laughs>
So my corn tortillas have been steaming for about four minutes, so ready to take them out here. And they should be nice and soft and pliable. Just about done. And what Emeril actually does in the video is he cheats a little bit and he puts them on the grill pan if you kind of want to get them to the texture you want. But I think this is pretty good. So I'm just gonna put some of my chorizo, potato, onion filling into my taco. I don't want to overload it, otherwise I can't uh, fold it up. And I'm gonna put my raw tomatillo salsa on there. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna put um, some of my, let's start with this roasted tomato salsa that I made. Now he also actually makes a salsa fresa or a fresh salsa, which consists of lime, red onion, tomatoes, um, a little bit of salt in there. Um, so it's almost like a pico de gallo, but we're just gonna focus on our roasted tomato salsa, then the chorizo. Yeah. And then our lovely roasted poblano peppers. Just gonna give it a really nice taste. And then on top of that, we're gonna put some pepper jack cheese, which is that spicy white cheese on top of there. I filled that up. Great. So we've assembled all of our tacos and we are ready to try them. So which one are we going to try first? You're more than welcome to have one of mine. All right. There you go. Mm. Mm. You can really taste that chard of the poblano pepper. I love that. It's very, very earthy. Yes, it is. It's a very earthy taste. It's got a real depth of flavor to it. It does. The roasting it's very rich. Of the salsa and the mm -hmm. poblanos and everything. And let's try mine by Rick Bayless. Mm. I do like the contrast of my fresh salsa to kind of all the spices of the chorizo. Yes, it's definitely lighter than mine. I actually personally don't like potatoes in my tacos. I think More tacos, breakfast thing? Yeah, I yeah. think tacos are already so heavy and starchy. And to add potatoes on top of that, now, chorizo and potatoes with a fried egg on top, nice. <laughs> but it's a little bit heavy, but I have to say, with that contrasting avocado and tomatillo, it does work very yeah. well. And yes, adding the lime does help too. Um, but what is gonna be the winner? Am I allowed to vote for myself? <laughs> you are allowed to vote for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I d yeah, I think I'm a much bigger fan of mine just because of the contrast of the fresh, of the fresh tomatillo salsa and kind of that heavy chorizo and potato. Yeah, it is a close call. I do love those poblano, charred poblano peppers, but I think that contrast, that freshness of the avocado and tomatillo goes very well with your chorizo. So well Thank done, you. Lolita. You have won. <laughs> you won. Thank you, week. Rick Bayless. So my name is Lolita Lopantry. And I'm Judith Jones. And I just won this recipe war of chorizo tacos by Rick Bayless. So please subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and watch us next time on Recipe Wars.